We can roll. We're rolling. We're rolling. Okay, can you let's start off with what is the main purpose of your visit to Washington this time? The main purpose is to prepare for the summit, uh, the NATO summit in July in Warsaw, where we are going to address how NATO is uh, going to respond. Uh, to step up our response to a more assertive uh, Russia responsible for aggressive actions in Ukraine and also how NATO can step up our efforts to uh, contribute to the fight against uh, ISIL, uh, the turmoil, the violence we see in Iraq, Syria, uh, the wider Middle East uh, region. Mm -hmm. are the, those are the two top uh, security concerns of NATO or you have some, some else also? That's the two main challenges we face, and they are very different. Uh, but at the same time, we have to be able to both face the challenges from the southern flank, uh, from the Middle East, North Africa, and at the same time uh, face the challenges uh, posed by uh, Russia uh, to the east. And what we are doing is that we are implementing the uh, biggest reinforcement of our collective defense since the end of the Cold War. Uh, with uh, uh, more NATO forces in the eastern part of the alliance, with uh, uh, increased uh, ability, readiness of our forces to uh, reinforce uh, if needed. And we're also establishing a chain of uh, small headquarters uh, in the eastern part of the alliance, so they can be the vital link between the home forces and the uh, reinforcement uh, uh, if needed. So we are doing a lot to respond uh, to a new security environment. Is, is a dialogue possible with Russia? Dialogue is something which is needed uh, because we have to avoid uh, uh, a new Cold War and uh, uh, NATO is not seeking confrontation with Russia and we are not uh, uh, seeking a new Cold War. Uh, but we strongly believe that there is no contradiction uh, between uh, a strong defense, a firm and predictable approach and at the same time dialogue. Uh, and we are uh, also seeing the need for dialogue because we have to avoid incidents, accidents, uh, like for instance the downing of the uh, Russian plane uh, over Turkey. Uh, and if those, uh, this kind of incident uh, happens, we have to avoid them spiraling out of control. So different kinds of transparency, um, risk reduction mechanisms are important to avoid a difficult situation becoming uh, even uh, more difficult. Okay, NATO has become a topic, maybe after Wisconsin a little bit less, uh, in the presidential debate, especially among, among Republicans. Uh, some are concerned that uh, burden <coughs> sharing is not fair and that NATO needs to reconfigure more energetically. Yeah. So I will not comment on the US election uh, campaign. Uh, that's uh, up to the uh, American people to decide who is going to be the next president uh, in this country. But what I can do is to uh, tell what NATO is doing. And uh, we are a strong united alliance, uh, providing security both to North America and to Europe. And I think that two world wars in Europe has learned us all that security in Europe is also important uh, for uh, North America, uh, the United States and Canada. Second, uh, NATO is uh, playing a key role in the fight against uh, terrorism. Uh, we have to remember that our biggest military operation ever, Afghanistan, was a direct response to a terrorist attack on the United States, 9-11. And one third of the forces in Afghanistan, they have come from Canada and Europe. And uh, more than 1,000 European and Canadian soldiers have lost their lives uh, fighting terror uh, in Afghanistan. So I think that Afghanistan shows that uh, NATO is important both for the United States and Europe, and that we are protecting and defending each other. And can NATO just give some help in sort of resolving this migrant crisis that Europe is exposed to? NATO is uh, assisting the European Union and our NATO allies, Turkey and Greece, uh, to uh, handle the migrant and refugee crisis in uh, Europe. And we are doing uh, so by uh, deploying ships. We have deployed several ships to the Aegean Sea. They are not in the business of turning back the uh, uh, boats with migrants and refugees, but they are uh, providing uh, surveillance, reconnaissance, monitoring, and they are sharing this information with the Turkish Coast Guard, with the Greek Coast Guard, with the EU border agency Frontex. And then uh, these different local authorities use this to manage the refugee and migrant crisis in a better way. And the last question is, what's next for NATO? It, do you see expansion of further expansion of NATO 
NATO in the, is in the process of uh, uh, inviting uh, a new member and we have decided uh, to invite Montenegro and we are now in the process of finalizing the accession talks and uh, then we have to uh, go through the process of ratify uh, 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 support in all the different national parliaments for uh, inviting uh, Montenegro and then uh, NATO will be enlarged with uh, a new member, the 29th member of the alliance. And is there something beyond that? It's not on the agenda just now, but of course we will always uh, have an open approach and uh, we will always uh, work with partner countries. We have many partner countries uh, which are very close and important for NATO. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. And have a good stay. Thank you. So and much. next time, yeah. will you uh, sit down in here? <laughs>